Hello everybody, this is Laurent. I am the beverage director over at Big Star. I'm so excited that you bought the Los Vecinos del Campo house barrel of Mezcal. This is a passion project that we have had for about a year and a half. Two years ago, we went down uh, to Kentucky and picked a barrel of Weller bourbon uh, at the Buffalo Trace Distillery. We did that selection with none other than Julian Van Winkle, uh, whose family obviously has a long legacy in the bourbon world, and it's legendary. So having him along for the selection uh, was really a magical experience and a great way for us to lock in on a whiskey barrel uh, that just had the kind of character that he looks for when he is selecting for the Pappy line. The reason I bring up this bourbon story is because that vessel once the whiskey was extracted and bottled for us, uh, was sent down to Mexico, uh, and the team at Los Vecinos uh, aged their Espadine Mezcal in that barrel for about nine months. We tasted it a couple times, we loved it, and every time it took on just a little bit more of that bourbon character, uh, but maintained a lot of the richness of the agave distillate that was in there in the first place. Um, one of the things that we love to do with mezcal in general, but particularly with this, uh, on the cocktail side, is to make what's called a Oaxacan Old Fashioned. Now the history around this cocktail is a little murky. Who did it first? When did they do it? We can tell you that much like the Old Fashioned, it's a combination of bitters, a little bit of sugar, and your spirit of choice. And really, most people do that with a bourbon or a rye, uh, but the flip when you do it with mezcal is actually really nice. Because I want you to be able to recreate this at home and you may not have a mixing glass, kind of thought we would do it in the simplest way possible. So, we are gonna take two ounces of this mezcal and we're gonna go right in the glass. Now, in terms of glass, you can use pretty much whatever your favorite glass is. I always feel like if I'm having a cocktail at home, I kind of want to dress it up a little bit. So a really beautiful rocks glass is always the way to go for me. This is super helpful. It's called the Jigger. Generally one ounce on one side, two ounces on the other side. Now, the important thing is for the cocktail to be balanced. So. If you're just going to eyeball it, your ratio of bitters to sugar to the spirit might not be all there. So let's go two ounces on the spirit. These are chocolate bitters. Now, most of us might be familiar with Angostura uh, or Regan's or Peixos. Those are pretty common commercial bitters. Bitters are really an infusion of various um, bittering um, or aromatic um, ingredients that are steeped in high grain alcohol to perform a, an extraction process uh, to then have that sit and be able to add some color, nuance, and character to the cocktail that we're making, but essentially act like salt and pepper. So whatever is there is gonna be really elevated uh, and dialed in really nicely because of the bitters. And we use these mole bitters because the combination of uh, fresh cacao along with more typical bitters uh, works really well with mezcal. So this fancy bottle has a dropper in it, but it's really just like a few drops of these bitters in there. Now you could use just raw sugar and go right in there and just kind of stir it around until the sugar was dissolved, but by far the easiest thing to do for the cocktail to be really integrated uh, and just sort of have that nice sort of viscosity and fat that we like in a cocktail, that really supportive backbone, we do a syrup. Our sugar syrup is a combination of two parts sugar to one part water. So it's a little richer, it's called rich simple syrup. In this case, we are using demerara, but brown sugar, uh, anything that's got that sort of uh, darker color is gonna suit the drink really well. What we wanna get away from is refined white sugar, which really doesn't have any sort of, um, any sort of richness to it. We wanna go about an eighth to a quarter of an ounce in our jigger and we're just going to go right in the glass for the purposes of this cocktail here because again the point is to be able to recreate this at home 
We want some fresh ice. Now the nicer the cube, the better the cocktail will end up being uh, because the ice is not gonna melt right away into the drink. We're really using this to dilute the drink and to integrate the elements. Most cocktails are gonna be looking at about 15 to 20% water content. That's about right, you'll see the drink really expand. And again, the nicer the ice, the less it'll just melt into the glass. The key to this drink for me is the peel that goes on top. Now, if you're doing a Manhattan or an old fashioned um, or another type of stir cocktail that you would be more familiar with, you're gonna be using an orange or a lemon. In this case, I like to use the grapefruit. There is a ton of oil trapped in this peel and on a really nice grapefruit you can get a swath that's huge and when you express it on the drink all of that beautiful grapefruit aroma and that really kind of fragrant citrus is going to sit not only on the glass that's still exposed but also on the top layer of the drink makes for a pretty beguiling taste so this is the oaxacan old-fashioned i'm so glad you bought this bottle Thank you again for working with Big Star to stock your home bar. We hope you keep buying the bottles that we keep putting out. We got a lot more single barrels coming out this year, so keep checking back. I'm gonna take my mask off now to responsibly taste the cocktail that I just made and make sure that um, it tastes as well as I hope it does. It's delicious.